the bottom is supposed to look like a B, but to me, it just looks like a butt. Greetings, Lux lovers. Welcome or welcome back. Here we believe in intentional luxury and we're not afraid to invest in pieces that will work for us. So if that resonates with you, then please consider subscribing and stay a while. As many of you know, I'm an Hermes lover through and through, and I'm currently angling for a certain bag and basically focusing all my spend on that brand. But I'm also a major bag lover. So seeing as you seem to enjoy my last video of my fall bag first impressions video, I decided to go into stores once more and share my first impressions on more bags that have come out since then. So we have almost 30 bags for me to show you that I tried on. And while I do my best to report on bags that I've actually had a chance to touch and feel, there may be some that I'm happy to provide my initial thoughts on from afar. And that includes the first and second Phoebe Philo drops. So let's begin. First we'll go to Louis Vuitton and I was able to try on the Sommer BB in Cognac Epi Leather. And this comes in at about $2,240. This was absolutely beautiful and it was such a great size. It reminded me of like the Hermes gold color. But the Epi Leather to me is a little too treated for my liking. Like obviously leather doesn't actually look like that with the little wave pattern. So it does have to go through a lot of processing to get it that way. But I did love the size and I love a good crossbody mini bag and that interior lining, I think it's like microfiber or something, is pretty awesome. And my petite frame, it had a lot of different options available. I also tried the Locket MM in black and this is expensive at about $5,550. This would be a good work tote bag, but it wasn't quite my style, but I do think it's very professional looking. I did try to see if I could try on the Georgia's tote MM, AKA the Louis Vuitton Birkin and that comes in at about $9,900. It wasn't in store by the time I went. I think it's part of the men's line at LV, and I just knew that this would probably be a little too big for my liking. And next I went into Burberry, and I was really excited to see all of the new products under the creative direction of Daniel Lee. And subscribe to make sure you don't miss my future ready to wear unboxing, also from Burberry. But I was able to try on the Rose Clutch in the color Haze. This is $2,790. This is such a cool bag. It has really like lovely, lovely leather. It has this like metal opening and it's a beautiful clutch that you can just carry in your hands. However, I'm just not much of a clutch girl, so I don't think I would get a lot of use out of that. But they also have the Rose Chain Clutch in the color Prune and this is $2,490. And this is also so beautiful. I really love the gold chain that comes with it, but I do warn you, it's a tiny, tiny bag, so it doesn't even fit a phone. You would basically have to use it for just small, small items. I was then able to try on the small shield sling bag, and this is $2,290. And what's interesting about this is it takes inspiration from the old timey Burberry logo, but I kind of can't see the relation to the logo. And it does look like it has a bell on the end of it, but just so you know, there's no like metal ball in the bell. So it's not like you're ringing a bell when you walk, which would have been my concern when looking at this bag. The way they recommend wearing this is kind of slinging it over your shoulder with the bell facing down. While it's really interesting, I had to pass because it just really wasn't my style. I then tried on the chest satchel in the color Vine. I love dark green colors, as you know, and this is $3,650. The one I tried on in particular had fur, but this is very cool. It has a knight and rook charms on either side, really heavy, substantial hardware, which I appreciate, but I definitely wasn't a fan of the fur. Also, if you lift up the flap, the bottom is supposed to look like a B, but to me, it just looks like a butt, but they're very proud that it looks like a B for Burberry. Then I tried on the small night bag, also in the color vine, this comes in at around $3,250, and I really liked this one. It's super modular, very versatile, and the leather is so supple. It can be a shoulder bag. I was even able to cross body it because I'm pretty petite, and so I could cross body it and have it look like a bum bag. You're also able to adjust the strap so that the horse hardware hooks on to the metal ring and it becomes a hobo bag. I feel like nobody is really talking about that aspect of this bag. So the fact that it could have all of these different looks was definitely attractive. And I think the horse hardware steals the show. 
What an innovation. They also make this bag in a medium size and a large size, but even the medium size was like way too big for me. It kind of looks like it could be an overnight bag. Next, I went into Fendi, and while I was trying to see the new bag, the Fendi Boston 365, to me, this one looks really cool. It looks very roomy, and it looks like it can be a crossbody or a hand carry, but they didn't have it at that time. So I was able to try on the Fendi Origami Medium in the color white, and the black interlace leather. And that will run you about 2,850 for the white version and 4,900 for the interlace leather. Now, while I do love bags that have a lot of different options and variety, I think this design is good in theory. However, none of the shapes that it actually transforms into appeal to me very much. I think it's like the long handles that really lock this bag into being a shoulder carry, like it just cannot be a crossbody. I also do like the magnets that let it transform into the different shapes, and it has little loops as well to help you kind of open it up quickly. But when I look at the bag with all of the corners brought together, it just looks like Crab Rangoon. Mmm, Crab Rangoon. And on my way out, I was able to see this beautiful burgundy Fendi baguette, and I also saw this really beautiful burgundy sequin baguette. And I'm not much of a sequin gal, but this baguette made me question everything. And if you're enjoying yourself so far, I'd love for you to consider subscribing. I put a lot of effort into compiling these bag roundup videos over months of time. So if you're enjoying yourself, please subscribe to let me know you'd like to see more videos like this. And when I hit 1000 subscribers, I'll be giving away a Chanel holiday set. So I'd love your help to unlock that raffle. All right, on to Gucci. I was so impressed by Gucci's showing of winter bags. And if you saw my video that featured my handbag bingo card, I do think a shearling bag is a must have for advanced collectors. So here are some that I fell in love with at Gucci. First was the Jackie 1961 small shoulder bag in white shearling. And this one's pretty pricey at $3,890. I loved this bag. And in fact, I actually still do. The Jackie was not even on my radar until I saw this one bag. This one is so soft and the hardware on it is very nice. It's like winter in a handbag. However, it is really pricey. I think if it was around $2,000, it basically would have been mine. And just so you know, there is a little shearling strap that comes inside the bag that you can attach it to make it a crossbody bag but it's like super clunky. Maybe you can see it in the pictures here, but there's like a buckle at the bottom and then there's a buckle around the shoulder and it was like just too bumpy and a little silly looking for it to be a crossbody. So even though I love crossbody bags, I probably would never use this as a crossbody, but this is one I'll definitely be keeping an eye on to see if it ever goes on sale. This to me is like a bag that hugs you back. The next bag that I tried on was the Gucci Horsebit 1955 mini shoulder bag in the light brown suede. And this one comes in at about $2,200. This I thought was so cute too, but it's definitely giving Ugg boot vibes. That and the fact that it couldn't be a cross body meant that I had to pass. And then I tried on the GG Marmont super mini bag in Shearling. And this was the most affordable option at $1,950. This one is so cute and is very reminiscent of the shape of a Chanel mini rectangular, but I felt like the Shearling on this one was a little different and maybe even slightly cheaper than the Jackie bag, so I passed. And aside from the Shearling Gucci bags that came out, I really like these other cute leather ones. This one is the cutest bag from the Diana line, and as you can see, it definitely has Louis Vuitton Alma or Hermes Bolide vibes. I love the bamboo handle and also the crossbody strap, and here you can see it came in black or white. Very roomy, very versatile. I can't actually find it on the website anymore, so I'm not sure of the price. And then I found this Gucci Diana small shoulder bag, and this is $2,590. And this is really nice. Also with that bamboo top handle, it could be a hand carry. It has a cross body strap or also a top carry. And I really love this one and I enjoyed the magnetic closure. I also went to my local Bulgari to look at some fine jewelry, but in that visit, I just had to buy on this bag because it stopped me in my track. It's the Serpenti Forever East West shoulder bag in emerald green 
and this comes in at about $2,950. I usually don't like East West bags, but this one like caught my attention from across the store. I love this emerald green color and it even matched my Hermes green nails. I really like the fact that it had a detachable adjustable strap and also the serpenti on the front in that light gold plated brass with the black and white enamel and green malachite eyes is so cool. And as a side note, when I was looking online, I saw that this Serpenti Forever clutch is coming out and the price for this they say is $1,050. And this is so cute. It looks like one of those little Louis Vuitton pochettes. During my search for a luxury work bag, I did actually go into Dior to check out what's new. And while this isn't usually a brand that resonates with me a whole lot, I am warming up to it. So while I was there, I was able to try on a large Lady Dior in white. And this is pretty pricey at $7,000. I basically wanted to see what it would look like on my frame and also to get a sense if a laptop would fit in, but mine wouldn't. So while it is a nice bag, I'm not a huge fan of like the flat handles. So I moved on. I then tried the large Dior Toujours bag, and this is $4,400. This bag is huge. And I like the fact that the straps are actually extendable so that it could just be a top carry or even become a shoulder bag, but it's like a massive tote. And it kind of reminds me of a diaper bag. It's very versatile though, and I could see how people could love this. And as I was walking out, I saw the small Dior book tote in the Latte Canage Shearling. What a cute bag. This is totally appropriate for winter. I then went into my local Saint Laurent, and here's a brand that I don't own any bags from, but I came in because I saw some Shearling bags that caught my eye. The first one that I tried on is the Sac de Jour in large with Shearling, and this is about $4,000. It's not on the website, but I think this would be good for work, but it was a little too big for my frame. The next thing I tried on was this adorable Sac de Jour Baby in Shearling, and this I think is a little north of $3,000. I love this bag, and I love the fact that it had a crossbody strap, and as you can see, it's basically the same size as my Birkin 25, only in Shearling and with a strap. I came into store to try to see if I could try on the Mini Le Sanka set in Shearling, and that's at $1,990, but they didn't have this bag in stock. And this is the price point that I'm talking about when I want a small Shearling seasonal bag. It reminds me a lot of that Gucci Jackie bag, but for half the price. And then of course I had to try on the more gimmicky styles. This one is the Takeaway Box in black leather, and this is $1,890. When I was opening this, I literally was brought back to my childhood and the feeling of opening up a Happy Meal box. And I was not expecting that reaction, so this one definitely brings you back. I then tried on this Deli Clutch, and this is $1,890 in the silver. This was really cool, but it kind of looked like a sad sack on the shelf. A little too kitschy for me. But then I saw these other bags that literally stopped me in my tracks and I'm still thinking about to this day. This is the Jamie 4.3 in lambskin and it's $4,400. This bag is gorgeous. I love the gold hardware, the squishiness of the leather, the leather feels really good. And it definitely is reminiscent of the Chanel XL or XXL flat bag that's great for travel. But this to me is even softer and more smushy. And it looks so chic over the shoulder, but it doesn't look so great as a crossbody. So I probably would only use it as a shoulder bag because when it's in crossbody mode, the leather starts to gather and that's not great. And this picture is without anything even in it to drag it down. But the soft Napa leather is amazing and I really like this. What's interesting though is that there's no closure, just a large flap that overhangs. So just keep that in mind. But there are two strings on the inside that you can tie together to keep it shaped. By far my favorite is the next one and that's the Jamie 4.3 Small in the lambskin. And this is $2,990. This is the bag that got my heart pumping. It's basically the same construction as the other one, but only smaller. And it reminds me of the Chanel 19 bag, but without all that like crazy hardware because the Chanel 19 has the ruthenium and gold hardware and there's leather bits, like it's just a little too much. But this one, the leather feels so good, 
so soft. It was the perfect size for my body. It looked good over the shoulder, on the crook of my arm, as a crossbody. And again, I actually do like the fact that there's no closure. I am still thinking about this bag to this day, so maybe there's a first for everything and I might add a Saint Laurent bag to my collection. Next, I'll give you my thoughts on Phoebe Philo's drop in both October and in November. And I don't know about you, but in October when the first drop occurred, I definitely clutched my pearls when I saw the name of the bags containing the word Cabas. And while yes, I know that Celine can't have the rights to a word that literally means the word handbag, I was still really surprised that she just went there and used that term in her bag names too. The XL Cabas was way too big for my frame, so I passed on that. Now that is ludicrously capacious. But I did like the gig bag in oxblood leather, but if I have to be really honest, it was given Rebecca Minkoff vibes with that clasp. Oh yeah, I said it. Did anyone else have that iconic Rebecca Minkoff bag with the clasp down the front? So to me at this level, I expect more than off the shelf hardware, and I just couldn't pull the trigger on that one for that reason. And then the latest drop in November had this new style called the Drive Bag, and this one was $5,800. But did they call it the Drive Bag because it looks like an old-timey leather car seat? Hmm hard pass. So thank you to those who stayed with me to the end. Let us know in the comments if you own any of these bags or if you're also eyeing these bags and what you think. Don't forget to subscribe so I can launch my thousand subscriber giveaway before the holidays and also check me out on Instagram where I post the behind the scenes pictures of my bag try-ons before they make it to YouTube. If you've enjoyed this video I invite you to go down the rabbit hole that is my luxury chit chat playlist and I'll put that link here. Please like it if you liked it and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!